welcome to this lesson about spiritual entrepreneurs who are able to give birth to regenerative businesses. I think about this as being the thesis, if you will, for a business alchemist mentorship, because I believe that when spiritual entrepreneurs feel safe, this is what they're able to give birth to, which is regenerative businesses. And in order to have a nuanced discussion about this, we need to really get into what these two terms are. So the intention for this lesson is going to be to define these two terms. It really is a cultural shift to think about business as a spiritual practice. And anytime we're creating change, even if it's change for the better, there's the potential to bring up some shadows. So I want to start from a clarified space of how we define these terms in our community so that we're working with the same language and moving towards similar goals with your unique expression of how that applies to your regenerative business. Now, let's first talk about what a spiritual entrepreneur is, because I believe that it's more about how you approach your business instead of what it is that you do. The main characteristics of a spiritual entrepreneur is that you are somebody who approaches your business as a spiritual practice. It's one of my biggest pet peeves when people say that emotions have no place in your business because running a business, any entrepreneur is going to tell you that it is an emotional process. And when we approach our businesses as a spiritual practice, what we're doing is we are looking at those blocks and challenges and obstacles that come up in business. And we're leaning into our ability to alchemize those experiences and move forward in a way that feels aligned and regulated for you. This means that your work is not just about making money. It's about creating healing for the collective. And in that process, you and your clients both feel nourished from the results of that work. Now, as a result, what happens in the spiritual entrepreneurship journey is every single person who has been through BAM comes out feeling like they have been able to redefine what success looks like to them. It's a very individual process because we are constantly bombarded by the outside world, whether it is cultural or familial or community-based. There's so many things being put on us to define what success looks like. And when we really strip down all these layers, and particularly when we strip down this need to people please or this need to fit in and really seek out places where we belong instead, we find that success really looks different for each person. And so we're going to align on what success looks like for you. We also have a tendency to come out of this work examining the structures of toxic business practices and instead we're going to realign ourselves to build regenerative businesses. I put a little asterisk there because we're going to talk about what a regenerative business is in great detail so we're just going to put a pin in that for a second. We will also lean into our capacity to create reciprocity in work, and it doesn't end at work relationships. This extends beyond into every relationship in your life. I get that these are big goals, so it's easy to see how spiritual entrepreneurs can actually feel frozen, isolated, or stuck on a hamster wheel in this whole process. And so I find that a lot of times these blocks and obstacles that come up tend to fit under one of four categories, procrastination, perfectionism, getting stuck in the hustle, and overriding your own needs to serve people. If we break down those behaviors, we have to recognize that those are actually behaviors that indicate that you're in a threat response. And we have to recognize that building a spiritual business within an extractive system is inherently going to feel threatening. And so that's why this is happening. It's not anything that's wrong about you when you are procrastinating. It's actually your nervous system saying, this doesn't feel safe. And so I'm going to use one of these strategies that has worked for me in the past. When our nervous system is under threat, what it's going to do is it's going to shift into binary thinking. And so your thoughts are going to go from 
feeling and looking into nuance and just seeing a this or a that. There's only one of two solutions and I'm just going to pick one. And so it's easy to be really binary with capitalism. We can be anti-capitalistic. We need to create nuance in that conversation because yes, we can reject the whole monolithic package of capitalism, but the reality is that we culturally are going to be participating in capitalism in some form or another. And that is going to leave you feeling like you can't participate without being immoral Or you might feel like you're inadequate because you want to build this business and you see other people building businesses, but why can't you do it yourself? Or it might feel like you have to get this anti-capitalistic thing down perfectly so you end up in a free state and not doing anything at all. Now, because we're all about creating nuance here, this is where I want to invite us into all being pattern breakers. Now, this doesn't mean that you hold the sole responsibility of changing the tides, but what it does mean is that you are one part of a revolution to create ethical and regenerative businesses. So I want us all to take radical responsibility for this term, spiritual entrepreneur, and see that it's a responsibility that we all hold individually and in our own unique ways and in our own unique flavors. Capitalism is not just about commerce. There are philosophical and cultural underpinnings that show up in how we conduct business. And I don't think that the exchange of goods and services for a monetary return, I don't think that's inherently evil. But I do think that when humans are unable to process their individual or generational trauma, we operate from our sympathetic nervous systems and from our projections, which gives rise to toxicity in everything that we do, including how we participate in extractive businesses. So if a business is built with the primary intention and motive being about profit and growth, the predictable outcome is that it becomes extractive. We start to see life as a commodity, and there's a very obvious disregard for sustainability. It requires humans to trade time for money. And when this happens, we have to override the physical sensations of discomfort from our bodies so that we can be perceived of as being useful or valuable. And then when we take that on as our identities, that gets really ingrained in there. And it's hard to break out of those patterns. Now, if the prime motivation is profit, then there's going to be a culture of individualism and competition and manipulation of clients and employees. And that becomes the norm. And individualism and competition love hierarchy and elitism. So then we create systems in which the hoops that we jump through hold more value than the wisdom and experience that we hold in our lives. When I sit back and I read through this list, what I see is trauma patterns showing up in the pain bodies of businesses and in relationships. When it comes down to it, when there's trauma, when there's patterns of pain, what that means is that there's an imbalance. And rather than getting frustrated or upset by this, it actually gives me hope because I know that imbalances can be corrected. The work of untangling old patterns and correcting imbalances can come from a dysregulated place. And that's when we start to see pendulum swinging in the society. When we get dogmatic and we seek to indoctrinate others with our view without understanding what the other point of view is, we end up being against something which activates the fight or flight response. Instead, I'm hoping that by working through this together as a community, we're going to make those changes from a regulated space, which means we're going to talk about what we are for and move towards those values in an integrated and intentional way. We start shifting the dynamics within our own businesses because we start recognizing that we can't practice our work in a way that's manipulative and extractive if we want to be doing any sort of healing or progressive work. When we regulate our nervous systems, we make different choices for our businesses, which impacts how we invite our clients to say yes or how they say no to us how we make decisions based on abundance and values rather than on the bottom dollar. And what our individual businesses will do is they will shift the tide on how we participate in capitalism. 
if we can see here on this list, what we can expect from a regenerative business is, yes, there is profit and growth, but the profit and growth is a natural and predictable byproduct of your purposeful work. There's a culture of reciprocity. And when there's a culture of reciprocity, what we're doing is we're honoring life and nature and cycles as being inherently valuable. And we also see resources as being finite, which allows us to think about things and people and time and work as being a sacred thing rather than something that we can just blow through. And then there's always going to be more underneath the surface. Part of shifting away from capitalist practices and moving more into regenerative practices is actually going to be about listening to our body's communication. And when we listen to our bodies, what we're doing is we are tapping more deeply into our own connection with our intuition. In regenerative businesses, we are all about community and collaboration versus competition. And whenever we are entering into any sort of relationship with somebody who's interacting with our business, there's always an underlying idea of consent. We also are committing to walking beside the people that we serve instead of putting ourselves on a hierarchy, saying that we're better than, I know better than. And when we do that, we are valuing wisdom over knowledge and hoops that people have jumped through. I wanted to show you this slide that has the contrast between the toxic characteristics of a capitalist business and then the integrated characteristics of a regenerative business side by side. And I'm going to use an analogy that feels really near and dear to my heart, which is about agriculture. So Andre, who helps me run Empowered Curiosity and has been involved in the business since day one. The very first business that we came up with together was a farm that we called Little Wonder Farms. We were trying to implement regenerative agricultural practices. And when I started thinking about capitalist businesses versus regenerative businesses, I really got drawn into thinking about it in these terms. For those of us who don't have a in-depth background of agriculture, I'm just going to compare and contrast the differences between conventional agriculture and regenerative agriculture first. So in conventional agriculture, there's a huge focus on profit and yield. So we end up with a lot of monoculture practices that are extracted to the soil, meaning that we are pulling nutrients out of the soil and then we are replenishing those nutrients with chemicals. Conventional agriculture is also reliant on pesticides and herbicides, which shows a clear disregard for sustainability because we're not really thinking about how those chemicals are going to impact the future. There's also a practice of using hothouses, which bypasses the natural cycle of winter. You can't really grow tomatoes, for example, in the winter, but you can if you have a hothouse. And as you can see, there's a manipulation of the entire system of life and the entire cycles of nature and life that we are all tapped into. Now, on the contrast, regenerative agriculture is about shifting that focus from profit and yield and more into thinking about how do we build a healthy ecosystem. And the way that we do that is by focusing on the soil, which is the foundation of where everything grows from. And so nutrients are created through the natural cycles of composting rather than using chemicals to add into the soil. And essentially what the garden ends up doing is it makes its own food. From that healthy ecosystem and that healthy environment, what happens is a community gets brought in through the form of microbiome and through pollinators and all sorts of other critters that are going to work in collaboration with each other to create a safe and nourishing home for everybody. So if we're going to compare and contrast just simply, the conventional agriculture is focused on fruit versus in regenerative agriculture, the whole picture is taken into account with a higher emphasis on the soil. Now, how does this relate to businesses? I think about the soil as being the environment that we create. And I think about the microbiome as we are building up that soil and we're creating this lovely environment 
the microbiome are the people that we are inviting into this environment. It might be in the form of a social media following or a newsletter list, but it's really just a big group of folks who are hearing what you're putting out there and saying, yes, I want to listen to that. And so when you put in a seed, let's just use the tomato plant for the example, when you put a tomato seed into the soil, then the natural and predictable outcome is that the plant is going to grow in a healthy way. And so I think about that plant as being the product that you're putting out. Once that plant is flowering, you're inviting all sorts of different pollinators to come in and interact with that plant. And those are the clients that you are calling in. And then the fruit the tomato is going to be the profit. And this profit is really a win-win for both the client and the practitioner. And when you compare the differences between a tomato that was grown in conventional setting with chemical fertilizers and unhealthy soil and perhaps even in a hothouse, that tomato is going to be way less nutritious and way less juicy and delicious than a tomato that was grown in a regenerative space. To take the analogy even further, and we're thinking about regeneration, right? So we're thinking about the future. So the seeds from that fruit that was grown in the environment where the soil is really beautifully composted, there are lots of microbes, and it's been cared for and tended for in this way, the seeds from that fruit are actually going to be healthier. So the next generation of product or the next generation of fruit that you would like to grow is also going to be healthier. So we can sit here and talk about building a regenerative business from the standpoint of it's just right. This is just ethical. And these are all the steps in which you have to take in order to do it. But when we talk about it in that way, it's almost like the business is this externalized part of us. And really what I noticed in Little Wonder Farms is me as the farmer, I put myself into that environment. And so I became a part of that ecosystem. And when that happened, it wasn't just about I'm standing for these values. It's like I can sit in that garden and feel so grounded and so balanced and really look at it as I'm participating in the cycle of this garden. I'm participating in the life of this garden. And it's this living, breathing and evolving thing, as opposed to something that I am trying to control or something that is controlling me. And that's really the relationship that we want to build as we're moving towards building regenerative businesses. Now, I need to just take a pause here because when I use the term regenerative agriculture, regenerative business, it might sound like we're doing something brand new. And that's 100% not the case. What we're doing is we are going back to traditional practices, indigenous practices when it comes to agriculture. And so we are doing things that people have been doing already for generations and generations. And it's the same thing when we're talking about regenerative businesses, we are going back to community-based commerce practices. And that's really what I want to align us towards as we are moving towards regenerative businesses. Now that we have identified what a spiritual entrepreneur is and what a regenerative business is, we need to talk about how we get there. So these are the four aspects of what it takes to birth a regenerative business. The first one is trauma work. Because when we are no longer identified with and enmeshed in our individual pain cycles, we're able to see nuance and alternatives to the status quo. And this is really important because as we start thinking about how we want to create our own unique regenerative business, we are going to have to break outside of the norms of conventional businesses. Another aspect of building a regenerative business is return to your body. Your body is the storyteller of your life. And when you start listening to the communications, in other words, the physical sensations that you feel in your body, you'll see how your body has been your best business partner all along. 
Instead of overriding the wisdom of your body, when you reestablish a relationship with your body, you'll have a deeper connection with your intuition and you'll feel guided by that yes and no that comes from within instead of being confused by it. You won't return to hustle culture because your body is going to have some things to say about it. And really what your body has been doing is it's been talking this whole time, but somewhere along the line, you stopped listening. And so we're going to invite your body into the conversation with your business. The next piece is we are committing to learning from nature because when we witness what's happening in the natural cycles that are around you and start seeing the natural cycles that exist within your business, you are going to learn how to stay in balance. And then finally, we're going to talk about personal responsibility. We own our own actions in small and big ways so that we are no longer pushing pain onto the people and ultimately onto the culture that's around us. We all have a part to play, and some of us do this work quietly, others can be more on the front lines, but culture shifts happen through individuals making individual actions and taking an active role to break patterns that have been existing for generations. Now, I truly believe that this is going to shift the collective energy of how we view work, success, reciprocity. And I used to work for an acupuncture clinic that checked off every single box on the list of the characteristics of a capitalist business. At the time, I felt really helpless. I felt really victimized. I felt like I was being taken advantage of. And I could point my finger at the owner of the clinic and say that he was extractive He was manipulative, he was exploitative, and he was asking his employees to work in unsustainable ways. All that was true, but that would also be short-sighted and not the whole picture. That clinic and his business practices are actually the norm of what I see out there. Even in the healing arts field where clients are asking us to hold them in a safe space, it's the norm to view interactions as transactional relationships and hierarchical relationships. And so really what I want to do is I want to inspire service-based spiritual entrepreneurs to shift the narrative in each of your respective fields, because I think that this is how we're going to change that system from within. I believe that every field needs to fold into their work, trauma-informed practices, somatics, emotional alchemy, and I love thinking about inspiring you all to talk about these things in your own respective fields. I would also like to make it explicit not to share any of the worksheets or the integration exercises because all those pieces fit into the whole of BAM. And really, if you just give somebody because you're like, oh, you're going to love this worksheet. If you just give them that one piece, they're not actually getting a whole integrated part of the program. As a spiritual entrepreneur, you are part of a revolution of regenerative businesses that are being built aligned with your Tao, which is your soul's purpose, with ethics and personal responsibility and nature cycles. So I just want to say thank you so much for being here.